So if we're going to hit the chink in the armor for the Georgia program, then we got to hit the chink in the armor. Or is it a is a gaping uh, gash in the armor of Clemson football that everyone talks about these days? And that's transfer portal. Why doesn't Dabo use the transfer portal? Now, Lou, Jason and I get together about every week. And uh, I've given Jason a few weeks off here, but uh, I'm going to rope him back into our weekly discussion to talk Clemson now that we're into the season. And we've been a little light on the transfer portal because it's my thought, okay, this guy's an all-time great and the, the program hasn't collapsed. And as Jason has correctly pointed out, their transfer losses have been minimal and those losses have been much more minimal when you consider the quality of the player. They just haven't lost that much as well. So that's got to be considered. But at the same time, is this not truly the uh, correlation of NFL free agency where, yes, you build through the draft, but to be successful, you got to supplement your, your issues. And when you're uh, competitors, especially Florida State in 2024 or 2023 being the prime example of a team that stocked up and won a championship, at least in the ACC, on uh, transfer players, that you got to think that Dabo's either going to, he's, he's obviously drawn his line and he's either going to stand on it here in 2024 and it's going to prove that he's uh, ultimately right or he's going to have to bend at some point. Yeah, you know, if you go back to the offseason, you saw Clemson try to target a small number of offensive line. I can't remember if it was three or four. And one of those guys was actually Keelan Rutledge, who was fantastic for Georgia Tech against Florida State on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And that's part of why he ended up at Georgia Tech, because Dabo, you know, Dabo's not going to promise anybody a starting spot, and he's not going to get into this bidding war for you and stuff. You know, I – I kind of like Kirby's approach to the portal. You know, he doesn't lean on it heavily, but if he sees a hole he needs to plug, he goes and gets a guy. Um, you know, that 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 would be my preference if we're talking about Dabo and his portal strategy. Um, I think they need to be a little more aggressive than they have been. You, you can't recruit the portal the same way you do high school guys. Um, you got Clemson's recruiting process moves at a snail's pace. And when you do that with portal guys, man, they're committed for you can even get them on campus for a visit. Um, I do think it's an approach that's got to be tweaked. Um, I don't think he's got to rely heavily on it. If you go back over the last few years since the advent of the board, there's really only one starter they lost, which was Andrew Makuba. They almost lost him the year before last. But um, if you want to throw Bo Collins in there, you can. I'm not sure he was going to be starting this year. But um, at the very least, his snaps were going to go down dramatically. But even when you're still – when you're losing backup guys and you're losing, you know, redshirt freshmen and sophomores routinely to the portal, even if they're depth guys, and you're replacing them with high school guys, you're always going to stay young and inexperienced. You're not developing at the same pace you used to develop. Um, I would like to see Dabo at least. You know, I'll use defensive end as an example. That was a spot most people thought Clemson needed to – you know, bring in a guy from the portal, kind of bridge a gap. Not a lot of experience behind T.J. Parker, and he's only going to be a sophomore. Um, instead, they choose to move Peter Woods outside. You know, I, I think Clemson's got a lot of depth, you know, on the interior. They, they can afford to move Peter Woods outside, and I think he'll probably play pretty well there. We saw Christian Wilkins do the same thing for that Clemson a few years ago. But is that what is that where Peter Woods would be at his best? outside as opposed to inside. I'm not sure it is, but um, in was a spot that a lot of people thought Dabo should have looked at it in the portal. And, you know, they they just, instead of doing that, they they move woods outside. Uh, with all due respect, whether you're losing a starter or not is irrelevant when there are players in the portal that are better than your current starters. Um, Dabo was putting himself at a competitive disadvantage compared to everyone else in college football. It becomes even worse when you realize that while Clemson recruits good out of high school, they do not recruit great or elite. They're a 10 to 15 recruiting team. You look at the teams that recruit in the top five, Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, Michigan, whoever you want to name. 
they're out recruiting Clemson by a country mile out of high school, and then they're adding two or three elite players a year with experience to their roster through the portal that are immediate starters. So this idea that, well, we're not losing starters, so maybe we don't need anybody from the portal is a little bit silly, um, especially when you don't have a wide receiver that anybody can name. Your offensive line gets abused by everybody you play, and you've had two quarterbacks in a row that can't hit the broad side of a barn. If you put Keon Coleman and Devin Leary on Clemson last year, they win the ACC. It's not even close. You're talking about something that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Well, then Clemson's yeah. never going to matter. Maybe not, but it, you're not. It's, it's just, it's just never, he, what he if Navo never... has some course kind of principled stance against 105 scholarships that starts next year? He and he does. says, no, we're not doing that. We're only going to have 85 scholarship players because, you know, back in my day, well, we didn't do that. We didn't do things that way, so we're not going to do it. So everybody else has 105 scholarship players. Clemson has 85. You okay with that too? I mean, you cannot sit back and allow teams that are already better than you to get a competitive advantage over you by using the portal because your coach has his head stuck in the sand. The, the only thing to me worse than Dabo's dereliction of duty when it comes to the portal is fans, Clemson fans, who aren't screaming at the rooftop about Dabo driving a top five program into irrelevance by ignoring the portal. The portal's been around four years. Clemson has gotten worse every single year since the portal was invented. Is it possible that's a coincidence? I guess. People but can beat them more about it all they want. But he the is teams not. that were already better than Clemson are getting even more better through the, through the portal while Clemson is standing still. They're getting lapped. And I don't know. I'd be the most hated Georgia fan on the planet if Kirby Smart came out tomorrow and said, I'm not using the portal. We don't need it. It's I don't agree with it. I, it's against my principles. I, I, I would be yelling from every rooftop uh, that he needs to get it, get it together. This is insanity. Um, yeah, he's he's not, never going to change gonna on that. He's not going to do it, man. <laughs> I'm, glad Jason. Got, I'm glad you got to see him win two natties 10 years ago because it ain't happening again. So, Jason, when you say he's never going to do it, uh, obviously, if we're looking at the track record of four years, I can agree with you and say, yeah, <laughs> if he hasn't budged yet, but he's got to be smarter than that. We know that the man is smarter than that. We know that football coaches are arrogant by nature and they're stubborn by nature. And when they've had the success that he has, I understand where that thinking comes to from a certain aspect. But we saw Nick Saban and we saw him change when he was very out front about, I don't want to change. I don't want to play this style of football. I don't think it's good football, but that's the way the game's evolving. And so I would be a fool not to change with it. Therefore, we're hiring Lane Kiffin and we're going to throw the football all over the lot. And you know that I admire Dabo Sweeney for a lot of characteristics. and But I just don't think that this is some kind of ethical or morality play. I don't think it has anything to do with being right or wrong Ethically, it's the way the game's changed and the rules have changed. When I say he's never going to do it, what I mean is he's never going to give up a give up on a kid after a year or two and replace him with a guy from the portal. Uh, let's say Kay Clubnett, for example, since he mentioned Devin Leary. Never going to happen. He's just not going to do it. He, he It's a promise he makes to those kids and their families on the recruiting trail. And, and you know what? Since we're talking about the portal, you got to get into NIL stuff. I don't know that Clemson can get involved in those kind of bid wars. I don't think they can afford to win. Them. I don't think they can afford to win them. And if they could win one or two here or there, then you start talking about losing the guys already on your roster. Um, it's not like Clemson's got this big, huge, rich alumni base that some of these other schools have, man. They're, they're having to walk a fine line with how they spend some of that NIL money. But people can can like it or not like it, agree with it, not agree with it, you know, that – yeah, he Dabo Sweeney's made it clear, man. You can agree with it or not agree with it. He 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 wants to run a developmental program, and he he's just not gonna lean heavily on the portal to replace guys he recruited to come well, play for. Let me ask you this: You say he makes these promises to these recruits and their families. What promises is he making? That he's not gonna give their spot away to a guy in the portal, but he'll give it away to a true freshman that he recruits the next year. 
I, I'm just telling you like it, what, what the way it is, man. I just say, people disagree, with it, disagree with it. What happened to Ke- I mean, what promises he had on the field. Kelly Bryant? And then he sat you Kelly know? Bryant on his butt and put Trevor Lawrence in. Now that was the right move. You know why? Because Trevor Lawrence was better. He didn't give his spot away to Trevor Lawrence. Yes, he did. Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence beat him out on the field. Well, you you can bring a transfer in and have an open competition, and if the transfer beats him out, he beats him out. If he doesn't, the old the other guy gets to start. I don't I don't see the difference between a true. I think I said a minute ago, junior I mean, losing his starting job to a true freshman out of high school versus a sophomore out of the portal. I don't see right. the difference. Count reminder here: my name's not Dabo Sweeney. It is not my philosophy. I am not defending it. I'm just telling you what is. Well. I mean, it just is what it is. People, like I said, people can like it, they can hate it, agree with it, disagree with it, whatever, man. He, he's kind of dug in on it. I don't know that he's going to change. I hope he doesn't. Because if he does, he'll go back to running an elite program again. Right now, that's one less hurdle for everybody else. I, I, I me, I just, it doesn't matter to me one way or other, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, to me, I, I don't care anymore at this point. You know, it's just. Dang. Kind of is what it is. That bad, huh? Well, it's, 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 no, it's, it's not that. It's just ever since with what, ever since I started doing this for a living, man, it's just taking all the emotion out of them, man. I I don't care whether they win or lose anymore. I, hey. it is what it is. <laughs> That's something serious there. I, I, I don't. I'm not much of a fan the way I used to be before I started doing it for a living. I don't know. I got a different perspective on it now, and it's it, it's just changed it for me emotionally. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I hope you're right. That happens to a lot of people. That Not you, Mark. You, Mark, you're still way too emotional when it comes to Ohio State. You're way too emotional. You, you've I, really seen that, have you? You're way too really. <laughs> yeah, I remember right. 10 years ago. I don't Clemson flinch. Lost the what are you talking about? 10 years ago, Clemson lost the football game. Man, I might not sleep for a day or two, man. There you go. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, don't know, I don't know if it's because I got older. I started doing this for a living or what. I, I, I just don't have any – I'm not tied emotionally to it anymore. I still get really, really mad when Georgia loses and really upset and really bothered. I guess the only difference is now um, I make a lot more money. It, and it might and have had something to do with, with watching Clemson win a couple of national titles too, something I didn't think was ever going to happen again in my yeah. lifetime. You know, I was a little kid when they won the first one and something I never that thought was out. Yeah, that mellowed me out some too. Like losing to Alabama last year in the SEC championship game was rough, but it would have been a lot rougher had we not just won two national titles. So I, you know, made it a little bit easier to stomach. So I get where you're that coming from there. Does. <laughs> yeah, I get yeah, where you're coming from there. Now, pri- like prior to that, like because you know we kept taking these losses to Bama, like we winning at halftime and lose the game, and it kept happening over and over. And I, I mean, I just I thought it was never going to end. But then, you know. Uh, won a couple of them, and so that that, that I, I get where you're coming from there. That that did make the uh, loss last year a little. I mean, I still wish we would have won and made the playoffs and all that, but um, it wasn't as bad as like say the loss in 2018 in the SEC title game. Yeah, and the expectations have a lot to do with it. I know as an Ohio State fan that every time there's some kind of ranking that comes out being number three on the list or number four or things that would get a Penn state fan or a Tennessee fan giddy doesn't sit right because Ohio state fans want to be number one on every list. They want to be number one in recruiting. They want to be number one in national championships. They want to be number one in winning percentage. And when Alabama rules the world, that doesn't sit well. Even if you could argue, well, we've been number two or if George is ruling well, number two doesn't sit Right. Yeah, see, I, th- I think I can understand that coming from m- maybe Ohio State fans or Alabama fans. I mean, as a, as a Georgia fan, I, I, even we, Georgia's been really good for seven or eight years now. They've won two national titles. They're winning a bunch of games and all that. But I, I still don't go into a season thinking, well, if we don't win the national title, we're just terrible. Like, I, it, you know, it, it, and I sort of understand that from an Alabama perspective, especially Alabama fans who sort of, you know, depending on their age, maybe they sort of came into their fanhood at the, with the rise of Nick Saban. I mean, all they've seen is Bama just win, 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 win. So, you know, they go 10 and 2 and missed the playoffs a couple of years ago and the sky has fallen. You know, I, I still don't feel that way as a Georgia fan. Like, I, I enjoyed last season. 
I wish it wouldn't have ended, but like I wasn't, you know, okay, well, we weren't quite good enough last year. Yeah, there, there's a good lot of Clemson fans, you know, after those 2016 and 2018 seasons, they expected to win a national title every year. Every year. And, you know, yeah. it's just, I, that's it's not, not going to happen anywhere. Point. Yeah. And I'm kind of glad I haven't gotten to that. And honestly, I don't think Georgia fans really deserve to be at that. Like, I get it. Like, Alabama and Ohio State have been dominant multiple decades, going back a long time and stuff like that. Georgia's been a good program in most decades. Maybe you throw out the 90s or part, most of the 90s. Um, but, you know, they're not on, like, an Alabama or an Ohio State. I don't want, you know, the whole the kind of a blue blood discussion. Georgia's, I don't think Georgia's a blue blood. I think they're the first team that's not kind of on that list. But – so I don't go into a season, no matter how good I think Georgia's going to be, thinking, well, you know, if we don't go 100 and 0 and win the national title, it's just a complete waste of a season. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that. that Do we want to take in this blue blood conversation? I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead. Expecting to go in a season, you know, going into in a season and expecting to win every game all the way yeah. to the national title. That seems like it would take some of the fun out of. <laughs> right, and, and there's only one possible outcome that you can come away happy from like you're just 99 times out of 100 you're going to be miserable at the end of the year if you're a national title or bust kind of mentality again understanding why alabama fans especially over the last 10 years have kind of felt that way because they were there or winning it almost every single year so i sort of get it on their end but yes and because of what saban pulled off probably i don't even know if happy would describe it it would just be kind of satisfied like okay we accomplish what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. Right. Like the sun rising. You know, oh, yeah, sun came up again today. Go figure. We won another national title. <laughs> College football is even more exciting with some action on the line. And the games are even better when you're cashing in. And the voice of college football is the place to be to get the greatest value. Let's start with my picks. 75% against the money line. 58% against the spread. I've got a 40-year track record. In fact, in 2023, at $100 played per game, you would have netted over $9,300. And guess what? I'm just the warm-up act. Steve Merrill, our ace in the hole, show stopper from Wager Talk, six years with the voice of college football, over 30 years in the industry. Steve gives us analysis on all the big games, but you can't miss Steve's weekly under-the-radar pick, which went... 21 and 5 against the spread the last two seasons. I repeat, 21 and 5 against the spread. You also get picks from some of our top analysts here at the Voice of College Football, including Steve Dace and Matt Zemick. Become a YouTube channel member or Patreon member for just $99 per month. Go to the main channel on YouTube, click join, and select the betting tier. Do the same thing on Patreon. Make 2024 a winner now. 